Hey guys, as you guys can tell from the title and the thumbnail, I'm going to be reacting to the pitch meetings Tenant. I have not seen the film yet. I am a fan of Christopher Nolan. A lot of mixed emotions and feelings when it came to this film from the audience. It makes me want to watch it more. But I know a lot of people either loved the film but were very confused as far as the story. It was just very convoluted and some people were saying that it was way too smart for its own good. And then simple things like world building, character relations, he's like, I'm gonna make that so fucking complex. So I'm very intrigued with what Ryan George thinks about this film. Also, if you guys do not know who I am, hi, hello. My name is Ali Robbins. I am a content creator based out of Connecticut. In the past, I used to make low to no budget films, give people the example that you don't have to have a lot of money to make films. You just have to have time and a very great story. I also have a vision board of things that I want to accomplish in 2021, as well as my 19 Crimes wine, because eventually I plan on being sponsored by 19 Crimes. If you guys enjoy my content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you're always notified about the new videos that I have coming out. But also, if you decide that you want to leave a reaction suggestion in the comments below be sure that you are subscribed i do check by you subscribing i do take more priority to people that subscribe to my channel when it comes to suggestions because one it shows that you support my channel and that you love my content You have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's called Tenet. Okay. So we're gonna follow this guy, right? The protagonist. And what's his name? I just told you. Oh. And he's gonna be part of this operation at an opera house, right? And there's some weird stuff going on. Like he's saved by what seems to be a backwards bullet. Oh, interesting. And then he gets tortured by some bad guys and takes a little pill to kill himself. Oh, okay. I mean, very short movie, but still very enjoyable. No, that's, we're still gonna keep going. Oh, even better. Yeah, so it turns out being willing to take that pill was a test and he's being recruited into this organization called Tenet. That's the name of the movie. It is, and so he's gonna talk to this guy for a little bit. Sure, sure. And then he's gonna go talk to the scientist lady for a little bit. And what's she gonna tell him? Well, she's gonna tell him about this thing called inversion, right? Okay. And when things are inverted, they move backwards through time instead of forwards, because they have reverse entropy. Be honest with me, how tricky is it talking about this movie. Honestly, yeah, it, it, it has its challenges. Uh, scientific sounding things that I don't fully grasp are tight. So like the protagonist can catch an inverted bullet that's lodged into something using his gun, right? Stuff like that. Oh, wow, yeah, sounds cool. Just how? No, yes. no, yeah, okay. And he can also like catch an inverted bullet with his hand off a table, but as the scientist explains, he has to have dropped it. Like if you watch the tape, he's always the cause of it moving, whether forwards or backwards, you know? Right. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, you get it? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just I'm just kind of wrapping my head around it, but okay. Well, we're gonna have that scientist lady literally say, don't try to understand it, just feel it. So you can go that route if you want. Okay, I mean, I would like to understand though, so I could kind of follow what's going on, but. Imagine watching a film that's just amazing, like visually, you know, the scoring is just amazing. Then you get to the end of the film that's probably like two and a half hours, and you have no idea what the hell happened, and you can't even explain it to people that want to know if it's even worth watching. I hope this is not the case with this film. Again, I'm a fan of Nolan. There were so many people that were kind of against this film. Not that it was bad, it's just that you couldn't understand it. There is such a thing as going too strong with your concept. The problem that inside they're quite hollow and emotionally void. But I hate having to think too hard. Like I like thinking. I don't like things that are spoon fed to me when it comes to storytelling. But I really hope this is not one of those over the top, nonsensical, scientific -y. you have to be like have an IQ of a thousand to, to understand it. I'm hoping that's not the Case. Yeah, no, no, okay, I'll, I'll get there. Anyway, so she reveals that these inverted objects keep getting sent back from the future, right? Okay. And she thinks that maybe these are like remnants of a future war and that the world might end, but like in the past. Okay. And so why did you continue that sentence in a completely different place? Oh, well, sometimes we're going to do that thing where a single conversation kind of spans over different locations just to keep things dynamic on screen, you know? Right, okay, I mean, that does look good, but that means that the characters talk and then kind of pause their conversation, change locations, and then keep talking. Yeah, it just keeps exposition scenes a little more fun to watch, you know? So then... Now, like I said, I used to make films in the past. Um, I think you guys should totally watch them. They're all short films for the most part. I haven't really branched out to do a feature length, but I do have plans in the near future to create a feature 
future. One of the goals that I wanted to accomplish when making films, which wasn't the initial goal in making films, I just genuinely wanted to make a film, thus I made a film. As years started going on, I realized a lot of people were didn't know how to start making films. Ideally, just start. You don't even have to have a crazy set piece and a bunch of actors and all this stuff. Sometimes it just takes a really good story and timing. And one of the things that I definitely learned from having a no budget film is that a lot of the things you can get just comes from organic relationships that you create with people that have a thing that you need to create your story. When it comes to time management, to be able to utilize one location for multiple scenes is key. But I'm just looking at what he's saying. If you're having one scene and it's spanning between multiple locations, that's a lot of time spent. You know how much money goes into a Hollywood film that has a lot of locations? And I'm just saying from a person that made no budget films, I couldn't imagine having no budget, but yet having one lo like one conversation between two people span between four locations. So you're, you're fighting time because of the sun. One scene, it's sunny. And then the next minute the, the clouds come over and now you have a, sh a scene that's shadowy. Like, I don't know, it's just a lot of time not spent well. This just sounds like a very terrible waste of time. But again, didn't see it. I might watch it and love what they did. So what are you doing? I'm calling an Uber back to the office so I can finish that thought. All right. All right. He'll be here in seven minutes. Wow. Seven minutes. Okay. So then the protagonist has to go talk to this other guy, Neil. All right. So you know what? You guys already know what I do with my reactions. And if you're not a fan of the fact that I stop and pause and talk, you can always exit out. This is what I like doing. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. I have a lot of opinions when it comes to filmmaking. Now, when it comes to Robert Pattinson, this is one of those examples where you can't judge an actor according to a bad film that they were in because sometimes it's not the actor's fault. Now, I'm not saying that all the actors in Twilight were great. There's one actor in particular that I've seen them in other things, and I'm realizing it's not necessarily the stories that are terrible, which they sometimes are. That actor himself is not that good, and he only became famous because of his looks. I saw a film recently on Netflix that Robert Pattinson was in The Devil All the Time. It was actually very, very good. He was actually a terrible person in it, but his acting and his range is so intense. I love him a lot. Like, there's so many films that he's in from the past and now that I definitely just want to watch more because I want to see what he brings to the table. He's an incredible actor that has a lot of range. Like, he's, at, you know, he's British. In The Devil All the Time, he's playing like this deep southern guy and it's believable. And there's nothing worse than having a person that thinks that they have a lot of range and their, act their character characters are not believable. More intrigued to see him in this film than anything for films that he's done already and films that he's coming out with because I know he's going to be the new Batman. I am very interested in seeing more. I think I mentioned this already but I will be talking about The Devil all the time very soon on the channel because I thought it was a really good film. It's a very dark tragedy film. If you like being able to see unique craziness and if you are a person that wants to be convinced that Robert Pattinson is a good actor, I think you should watch it. We'll be talking about it very soon so hang tight and don't forget to subscribe. Gonna go talk to somebody else now. Okay. Yeah. And after that, he's gotta go talk to this other guy. Okay. A lot of going from person to person and talking so far. Yeah, but here's the thing. This time it turns out it wasn't actually a guy he was supposed to go see. Turns out it was this lady. Oh, uh, okay. Well, yeah, no, that is a pretty good twist, I guess. Right. Okay. So he's finally with the lady he needs to be talking to. He is. Yeah. And she's an arms dealer. Amazing. Okay. So what does he find out from her? Oh, uh, you're gonna like this. He finds out he's gonna have to go talk to another guy. Okay. And this guy, he tells him all about having to go talk to another guy. Oh my god. But to get to that guy, he's gonna have to talk to this lady first. What is going on? Oh, don't worry. Now this lady's one of the main characters. So we're we're on track now. Okay, thank god. So who is this lady? Well, her name is Kat, and she's married to this Russian oligarch named Sador, and she freaking hates this guy. Oh, how come? He's actually controlling her because she sold him a counterfeit painting, so now he's like, well, you can't see our son. Very rude. Yeah, extremely. Okay, so now I know a little bit about this cat lady. Tell me more about this protagonist guy. What's his backstory? Tell me about him. No. Well, what's, what's his, what's his character arc? Pass. Okay, what's his like, what's his emotional stake in the story? Well, he doesn't want the world to end, right? Understandable, uh... but what, like emotionally. Well, he lives in the world, so, you know, he doesn't want it to end. Okay. He also seems really invested in this cat lady, like he really wants to protect her. Seems to have some kind of bond with her. Oh, okay, well tell me more about that. No. Ah. <laughs> Look, it's just that I really want the movie concept and the action scenes to have a ton of breathing room, so we're not really gonna spend time on stuff like, like characters and stuff. Okay, I mean, it's gonna be a little tight.
tough for me to care about the story if you don't give me anything in that department, though. But it's gonna look very cool. Oh, it's gonna be very cool. Okay, I didn't realize. Okay, never mind character then. Okay, so now for Cat to bring the protagonist to her evil husband, he's gotta destroy this painting. Okay, okay, and so what's the plan? Well, this thing's in this super protected vault, right? So the plan is, hold on, let me set the mood here. <laughs> That doesn't happen, right? Does that really happen like that? Like, that's excusable for someone that's a YouTuber that is making their own films and sometimes you don't check the audio levels and sometimes, you know, hits the red mark and it's like, ah! Built, like, millions of dollars as a budget to create a film and that is the case. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry about that. That was that was very loud music. Yeah, it's very good music though. Right, okay, but I couldn't hear what you were saying. It's not gonna be like that in the movie, is it? It is, yeah, because it's very good music, you know? It's gonna build up the tension. I can't hear the talking. But it's good music though. So then the protagonist <laughs> is gonna have this fight scene where he's like fighting this guy who's moving in reverse. It's gonna be nuts. Oh yeah, no, that does sound cool. And then we're gonna finally meet this Russian oligarch and kind of figure out what his evil plan is. Okay, and so what is his plan? Well, so in the future, the scientist developed this algorithm them. That could kind of invert the world, right? Because they're all mad in the future about global warming, like we destroyed the planet. Okay. And she split up this algorithm into nine pieces and hid them in the past because they would pretty much end the past and so maybe the future too. And so the bad guy is putting this algorithm together. Exactly. And he's actually dying, so he's kind of like, well, might as well take out the whole world with me as I go out. So he has kind of the same motivation as a kid flipping a Monopoly board because he's losing. Pretty much, yeah. So we're going to have this amazing car chase Jeez. scene where some of the cars are moving backwards in time. Cool. It's going to be nuts. Wow, 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 wow. And then that cat lady's gonna get inverse shot by her husband, and so the protagonist, he's gonna risk the whole world to save her. I still wish I understood what that real invert, like I know he explained it at the beginning what this inverse inversion means, but like even when he says it and he explained it and now he's saying, using it in like a complete sentence, I still don't get it. But okay. So they're gonna invert themselves and start moving backwards through time. And so, and so how does that work? Oh, there's some very cool stuff going on. For example, like oxygen flow goes the other way in this direction so they need their own oxygen basically everything's backwards like explosions make things cold and so does that mean that like light receptors and people's eyes start emitting light what do people have flashlight eyes no i mean please don't think about this too much how do inverted people poop does it go up okay so anyway they're gonna travel back in time and we're gonna find out that the protagonist was actually legitimate question don't ask too many questions stuff starts to fall apart so they need to stop the bad guy from ending the whole world so they team up with these time traveling army guys that just kind of come out of nowhere oh and they go on this freaking mission where one team is moving forwards through time shooting at people and then another team waits a while and then moves backwards through time through the same fight and so like who are they shooting at exactly ah oh no <laughs> Wait a minute, is this their way of like not answering legitimate questions that will possibly come up by having someone explain it? You're not able to hear it because probably the explanation is probably bullshit. Is that what he's, is that what Ryan George is coming at with this? That's what I'm getting out of it. What? So protagonist and army guy are gonna go into this bunker, but then Neil sees that they're in trouble, so he has to go help. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on. And there's like a dead body when they get there, but then the thing suddenly pops up and takes a bullet to save the protagonist. It's gonna be crazy. Please turn that down. Okay, let me turn that off. So anyway, it turns out that Neil actually sacrifices himself to save the protagonist. Okay, so now I think that was entertaining, but also, what just happened? Well, Neil's gonna explain that Tenet is actually founded by the protagonist and that he has a future in the past. Okay. So Neil waited with one of the teams until after the battle and then moved through it like in an inverted way backwards in time, but then he saw that the protagonist was in trouble, so he re-inverted himself and then saved him with a Humvee. Right. But then after that, he has a little talk with the protagonist and then he has to go re-invert himself to go take that bullet to save the protagonist's life. Right. O okay. No. Yeah, yeah, okay. And so the protagonist is gonna keep moving forward through time, but then because inversion is the thing, he's actually the one who founded Tenet at a certain point in time, we're not sure when, and he's the one who recruited Neil. Sure, yeah, okay, okay. You understand? Do you get it? I, uh, it's a little complicated. <laughs> I feel like maybe it'll be hard for the general audience to kind of grasp what's going on. Actually, it's gonna be barely an inconvenience. Super, Super easy. easy. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because see, it's gonna be so confusing and hard to hear that people are gonna want to go watch it a couple times. Is that gonna work? It might. It uh, seems a little risky. Well, I mean, you gotta take a risk sometimes, right? It's not like the future of cinema depends on how this one movie performs. I guess not. Oh, oh, 
Oh, God. All right, let's read it. Tennis box office failure led to Warner Brothers streaming release plan. Warner Media CEO says Tennant's underwhelming performance led to their 2020 run release strategy as it told them audience aren't ready for theaters. So they had to just put it on a streaming service because it wasn't going to make the money that they were expecting it to be because it was way more complex than it should have been for a film. And a lot of people's brains started to explode. Ah, that's not good. Oh well. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I still wanna see it. My head started to hurt just listening to what Ryan George was saying. If it's gonna be like that, but when I actually watch the film, I don't know. But I don't like things that just go over my head. No matter how many times I watch it, I'm just never gonna get it. Thank God for Inception, because we know what a complex film that you could still get looks like. I think like Christopher Nolan, after not even watching Tenet, but I'm just saying, I feel like he's trying to top Inception by being more over the top with his story and his world building. And it clearly doesn't look like it paid off. So, all right guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you really like it, definitely subscribe. Let me know in the comments below, have you seen Tenet? Was it as complex as Ryan George is saying it is? And would you recommend me to watch it? Do you think it's worth the watch? Do you think that my, my nose will start bleeding and my brains will start to just go in disarray? Let me know, because I'm, I'm very intrigued. Again, I'm a, I'm a Nolan fan, but damn it, Nolan, you ain't gotta be that crazy with your storytelling. Also, also, if you guys love my face and enjoy my content, you know what to do, and I'll see you all in the next video.